In computing, a computer program or subroutine is called re-entrant if it can be interrupted in the middle of its execution and then safely called again before its previous invocation's complete execution. The interruption could be caused by an internal action such as a jump or call, or by an external action such as a hardware interrupt or signal. Once the re-entered invocation completes, the previous invocations will resume correct execution. This definition originates from single-threaded programming environments where the flow of control could be interrupted by a hardware interrupt and transferred to an interrupt service routine. Any subroutine used by the ISO that could potentially have been executing when the interrupt was triggered should be re-entrant. Often, subroutines accessible via the operating system kernel are not re-entrant. Hence, interrupt service routines are limited in the actions they can perform. For instance, they are usually restricted from accessing the file system and sometimes even from allocating memory. A subroutine that is directly or indirectly recursive should be re-entrant. This policy is partially enforced by structured programming languages. However a subroutine can fail to be re-entrant if it relies on a global variable to remain unchanged but that variable is modified when the subroutine is recursively invoked. This definition of re-entrancy differs from that of thread safety in multi-threaded environments. A re-entrant subroutine can achieve thread safety, but being re-entrant alone might not be sufficient to be thread safe in all situations. Conversely, thread safe code does not necessarily have to be re-entrant. Other terms used for re-entrant programs include pure procedure, or shareable code. Example. This is an example of a swap function that fails to be re-entrant. As such, it should not have been used in the interrupt service routine is. Swap could be made thread safe by making tthread local. It still fails to be re-entrant, and this will continue to cause problems if is is called in the same context as a thread already executing swap. The following modification of the swap function, which is careful to leave the global data in a consistent state at the time it exits, is perfectly re-entrant. However, it is not thread safe since it does not ensure the global data is in a consistent state during execution. Background: Re-entrancy is not the same thing as idempotence, in which the function may be called more than once yet generate exactly the same output as if it had only been called once. Generally speaking, a function produces output data based on some input data. Shared data could be accessed by anybody at any time. If data can be changed by anybody then there is no guarantee for those who share a datum whether that datum is the same as at any time before. Data has a characteristic called a scope, which describes where in a program the data may be used. Data scope is either global, or local. Local data are not shared by any, re-entering or not, routines. Therefore, they do not affect re-entrants. Global data are defined outside functions, and can be accessed by more than one function either in form of global variables, or as static variables. In object-oriented programming, global data are defined in the scope of a class and can be private, making it accessible only to functions of that class. There is also the concept of instance variables, where a class variable is bound to a class instance. For these reasons, in object-oriented programming this distinction is usually reserved for the data accessible outside of the class, and for the data independent of class instances. Reentrancy is distinct from, but closely related to, thread safety. A function can be thread safe and still not reentrant. For example, a function could be wrapped all around with a mutex, but if that function is used in an interrupt service routine, it could starve waiting for the first execution to release the mutex. The key for avoiding confusion is that re-entrant refers to only one thread executing. It is a concept from the time when no multitasking operating systems existed. Rules for re-entrancy, re-entrant code may not hold any static non-constant data. Re-entrant functions can work with global data. For example, a re-entrant interrupt service routine could grab a piece of hardware status to work with which is not only global, but volatile. Still, typical use of static variables and global data is not advised, in the sense that only atomic read-modify-write instructions should be used in these variables. 
re-entrant code may not modify its own code. The operating system might allow a process to modify its code. There are various reasons for this but this would cause a problem with re-entrancy, since the code might not be the same next time. It may, however, modify itself if it resides in its own unique memory. That is, if each new invocation uses a different physical machine code location where a copy of the original code is made, it will not affect other invocations even if it modifies itself during execution of that particular invocation. Reentrant code may not call non reentrant computer programs or routines. Multiple levels of user process priority and or multiprocessing usually complicate the control of reentrant code. It is important to keep track of any access and or side effects that are done inside a routine designed to be reentrant. Reentrant interrupt handler A reentrant interrupt handler is an interrupt handler that re enables interrupts early in the interrupt handler. This may reduce interrupt latency. In general, while programming interrupt service routines, it is recommended to re enable interrupts as soon as possible in the interrupt handler. This practice helps to avoid losing interrupts. Further examples, in the following piece of C code, neither F nor G functions are reentrant. In the above, F depends on a non-constant global variable G var. Thus, if two threads execute it and access G var concurrently, then the result varies depending on the timing of the execution. Hence, F is not reentrant. Neither is G. It calls F which is not re-entrant. These slightly altered versions are re-entrant. In the following piece of C code, the function is thread safe, but not re-entrant. In the above, function can be called by different threads without any problem. But if the function is used in a re-entrant interrupt handler and a second interrupt arises inside the function, the second routine will hang forever. As interrupt servicing can disable other interrupts, the whole system could suffer. See also, Referential Transparency, Idempotence. References. Further reading, Karisk, Michael. The Linux Programming Interface. No Starch Press. External links, Article Use Reentrant Functions for Safer Signal Handling by Dipak Kajar, Writing Reentrant and Thread Safe Code, from AIX version 4.3 General Programming Concepts, Writing and Debugging Programs, Second Edition. 1999. Jack Gantz. Introduction to Reentrancy. Embedded. Raymond Chen. The difference between thread safety and reentrancy. The old new thing.